What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we got the uh, we got the Skeeter got the cover on. We're all we're packing up, man. Getting ready to go down to Sam Rayburn for a Super Series tournament, BFL. Uh, sitting tenth in the points right now. Got a shot at Angler of the Year, maybe. I I don't know uh, really. Uh, yeah, I can't do all the math in my head. I don't know how many people are gonna show up. Uh, with gas being the way it is, uh, maybe maybe more people will show up. Pretty excited. Uh, I haven't fished a tournament since May, so I'm going through going through a little bit of withdrawals. I gotta be honest. Uh, watching a lot of Bass Live and BPT and you know all that stuff. I'm just a big fan of the sport, and I kind of I'm kind of envious of those guys a little bit. Uh, I've got an awesome family at the house, and uh, quite frankly, it's just kind of hard to leave them now. I don't want to. I don't want to be on the road as much as those guys have to be on the road. That is just. I can barely drive to Dallas <laughs> without. Of course, you got to stop at Bucky's. Uh, if you're from Longview, you know where Bucky's is. That's that's the number one pit stop on the way to Six Flags. So, um, anyway. Uh, I'm gonna show you some more videos. Hopefully, I'm gonna carry along for the ride, and we have an actual good tournament. I haven't been to, I haven't been to Sam Rayburn in, gosh, uh, April or March. I can't really remember. Uh, we've had a lot of rain, a lot of flooding. Uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, they got pounded. I think they got nine inches of rain or 11 inches of rain in like a six-hour window or something. It was crazy. Uh, Longview didn't get a whole lot. We got we got enough. Uh, hopefully get us out of a burn van. But unfortunately for me, uh, me and my partner Brad, he he got this huge yurt tent, like canvas style expedition tent, and uh, we we're trying to keep the cost down. So we we're just like, man, let's just stay in the tent. We'll, we'll put a get a get a uh, campsite at Twin Dykes. Real nice campgrounds on lower in the lake. Let's just go cheap, you know, just camp it. And uh, <laughs> lo and behold, my luck anyway, all the rain is headed to Sam Rayburn. So probably doing all this prep work and then wind up getting a hotel anyway at Rayburn Inn. So I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't tent camped and honestly, I cannot remember. I was probably a little kid by then, but um, anyway, Tomorrow morning, up bright and early, headed to Sam Rayburn, and uh, I look forward to showing you the ropes, or actually, uh, not the ropes. You don't need to show the ropes. I'm gonna carry you for the ride, so y'all stay tuned. All right, we are on our way to Sam Rayburn. Just dropped my daughter off at school. Um, I'm pretty excited about the forecast. It doesn't look like there's gonna be as much rain as they said it was. Uh, so the tent camping is not gonna be near as bad. And uh, but my buddy said he's got an air conditioner for it. And it was so cold in the tent, he said he's sleeping in toboggan tonight. So I'm, uh, I'd rather be cold than hot any day. So I'm excited about that part. I was, I was you know, fully prepared to just be sleeping in your underwear and taking a bath in mosquito spray just to be able to sleep but uh yeah we are two hours i just left hosel so two hours hopefully we'll be on the water and uh start breaking down rayburn I, you know rayburn for me has always been a little bit of a a mystery uh things that um, you think would make sense or really look good and uh, there's no fish on it, like ever. I don't know if there's a bass has ever been caught there in its entire, since the lake was filled up. I have no idea. They look good on paper, and that's all you can go with when you're practicing. So fortunately, I found a lot of brush piles over the years, and I just know in my heart that eventually I'm gonna roll up to one, and there's gonna be a giant fish waiting for me. So hopefully that happens this weekend. So sitting 10th in the points, and I don't know how it really works because the Super Series is a double points qualifier. 
and uh, I mean, who knows, like five of the guys that are ahead of me right now might not even show up for this tournament, I don't know. Uh, so I just, we'll see what happens. I'm not really worried about that as much. Um, I just want to make it to day two. Uh, last year was really tough. I think you only had to have 13 pounds to make day two. And uh, I just want to do that one time. I just want to, I want to catch the fish on Sam Rayburn when I actually need to catch the fish and uh, when they count. So, and so I've also had a lot of bad luck on Sam Rayburn. I've lost a lot of big fish. Uh, I remember a, a Costa, a Costa event, gosh, three, three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. So I was skipping a swim jig around cypress trees and uh, I had one literally hit this thing, as soon, I mean, a big fish. Uh, she hit it as soon as it hit the water, almost kind of like a frog bite. And I was reeling her back to the boat. And everything's going fine. She's digging, pulling real hard. And I just had her just kind of letting her do her thing. I mean, she wasn't jumping out of the water or nothing. She was just digging. And uh, all of a sudden the jig just popped out of her mouth and she just kind of laid on her side almost on the surface of the water just kind of like trying to figure out what happened and so she got off she was five to six pounds all day long so hey that's fishing right you know no big deal it's like i was obviously i was ticked off but it wasn't the end of the world five minutes later skip swim jig under another cypress tree and same deal getting everything's going perfect get this fish almost back to the boat there's like this little bitty twig sticking out of the water that I wouldn't have thought anything about or I, I obviously I didn't because I didn't try to steer away from it and she's almost the boat she makes another dig and wraps me around that stupid twig and I can see her down there about two foot underwater just flopping and then finally breaks me off and she was five to six pounds so literally give or take let's say 10 to 11 pounds worth of fish five minutes apart that hurt I, I gotta be honest I had my first Iconelli moment so hopefully we don't have any of those and uh, man I really hope y'all enjoy this video and uh, stay tuned next next time you see me we'll be on the water take it easy officially going to practice so first thing we did was we got on the uh, lake of the lake sam rayburn to check the water level and uh it hasn't really come up like i thought it would after the big rains uh we're still about almost four and a half foot low so i am going to change the water level offset on my hummingbird to actually i'm just going to go ahead and make it five way I don't run across some sandbar and get my boat stuck so uh, today is idling not a whole lot of fishing we're just gonna idle around and look we got the side scan going we got it dialed we're gonna go try to find that uh, proverbial needle in a haystack that a lot of the local guys always seem to I mean they live down here they should know where that kind of stuff is so uh, I gotta find it, and I got a day and a half to do it. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Stick with me. Hopefully, I remember to turn the GoPro on from time to time. Y'all be good. All right, man. We had a good first day of practice. I'm headed back to the ramp now. Found some, uh, found some new spots. I went to a lot of new stuff today. Try to. Every time I come to Rayburn, I try to go somewhere I've never been and uh, find different brush piles, different you know, rocky points, ledges, just, you know, not go to the same thing every, th every time, hoping for a different result. So, uh, had a lot of fun. You can see behind me the rain's basically making me come in before I'm ready. So, uh, I love this place, man. Lake Sam Rayburn is so beautiful. So, anyway. 
I'm gonna get back to camp and uh, just try to try to get settled in and see what this yurt looks like. So uh, hopefully we'll figure that out here in just a little bit. <laughs> we gotta see the yurt, the wedding gift. So this is home away from home right here. Wow. I'm a, I'll make it work. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. We might be uh I think you put it right there by the door. I put the AC unit was right. Watch the YouTube video too. Yeah, you YouTubed it. <laughs> nice. Uh, we're all set up. Parking's a little bit of a punk. Thing. I think I am gonna back this thing in the grass. Because okay. if I if I come off the street and put it right in right in there, I don't think I don't know. We'll give it a shot. <clears throat> well, show you what we got well in here. A little camp stove, some burgers, onions. I mean, we just we live in that high life right now. Uh, my buddy Brad had to, poor guy's got to go home, drive all the way back to Longview. He's having boat problems. He's uh, got to go borrow, borrow a buddy's boat. And uh, <clears throat> so he's swatching, swip it, sw <laughs> I can't even talk. He's going to be swapping everything over to his uh, borrowed boat in the morning. And then hopefully he gets back down here and he gets to practice again. So. Uh, we both found fish today, so that's good. Hopefully they stay put till Saturday. Um, anyway, man, I am living the dream. I haven't camped in so long, I cannot remember. So I'm kind of actually digging this. Got the got the yurt tent with with air conditioning. So uh, we're living it. This is fun. So uh, we'll see y'all in the morning. All right, day two practice. Again, I found some stuff yesterday. I got two holes that I know I can catch quality tournament largemouth out of and not just Kentucky spotted bass. Now, one thing about this lake I've learned is some of the best looking offshore <clears throat> stuff, you could, I mean, if Bill Dance was in the boat, he'd be like, let's fish here. It's gonna be fish here. And then it's another but Kentucky spotted bass or white bass. Uh, I've never, it's kind of frustrating. Um, so anyway, we've got a lot of idling to do today. I'm actually idling over a little point right now. I'm gonna try to throw a buzz bait on some timber. That's just something I've had in my mind. It's kind of like home where you get up in a shallow flat with timber and early morning with the top water. And I just feel like uh, I feel like that's gonna be be the deal. So, uh, but Sam Rayburn again is almost five foot low. And there is a ton of ton of uh, timber that I didn't even know was there, and you want an eye opening too. Like you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I've been driving by that this whole time. <clears throat> kind of scary. Uh, anyway, we're gonna go. We got eight, nine hours worth of practice again today, and hopefully, I can find a little more to make me feel comfortable because. <clears throat> you know what? I don't even know how many people are gonna fish this tournament. Could be a hundred. Could be a full field for all I know. But uh, <clears throat> boat number plays a big deal in these tournaments. I could be dead last, and I feel like one of the spots that I did find, somebody else has to know about it. It was just too, too good to. Uh, to not have a boat sitting on it, so um, hopefully that's hopefully it's me. Cause I feel really good about that spot for sure. Um, caught a really good, nice four pounder yesterday on a crankbait, uh, and I'm <clears throat> I'm digging that because I like throwing crankbaits. I like to cover water, and uh, it's just a lot of fun, a lot of a, a really fun way to fish. Um, so, 
but I only got that one color in that crankbait. So if I catch them again on it today, then I will be marching my little butt over to tackle at it and cleaning them out because I only have one of that one of that color and uh, it's like a chartreuse sexy shad uh, or pearl. It's, it's really good looking color. The water I've been fishing so far has been pretty clean. Uh, I, the fish I caught, I'm actually seeing about five foot under the water fighting me back to the boat. So um, I just feel, uh, oh man, dude, you gotta see this. This is why I love fishing. Oh man. They don't get better than that, dude. I feel sorry for all the people that are still still asleep in their bed. They're totally missing that. Boat 112. <coughs> That's right. 415. Yes, sir. All of our servicemen, both home and abroad, they're defending our rights and freedom, so we may be here to do so. In the Lord's name we pray, amen. Kick the tires and light the fires. Woo! Start the morning. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. That's a good one. All I can say is we're fishing. That's all that matters. Kentucky. Make it 
14. Brian Bickery coming in next out of Longview. He's on that boater side. Brian's got a five bass limit today for us in his bag. His weight today. 11 pounds, 6 ounces, got you a 29 spot right now, right there on the bubble to go fishing tomorrow. Thank you, Brian. Jeremy Bill coming in next out of Montgomery. He's on, that, he's on that boater side, and he's got one. <laughs> I got nothing to say other than I'm sorry. I really tried. The, you know, tournament kicked off. You get in tournament mode. You're just... You're wide open and all you can think about is catching fish because every second counts, every fish counts. So somewhere in the middle of the morning after we got to our first spot, my GoPro's like shut off. And I never even thought to check it again. I'm So I apologize. I really wanted to, to get y'all from point A to B for a change and I just never can, can, I never can seem to do it. And you know, so it's my hats off to those guys that can make a complete tournament video. You know, Brandon Polinick and Jacob Wheeler, and you know, all those guys. They they have it down pat. You know, Scott Martin makes a cool tournament video. Um, but anyway, I'm sorry. I will do better. We we made it to the regionals, which is on Grand Lake in Oklahoma, and I will definitely. Um, I will definitely keep an eye on it. I promise. I will. You, you'll get some fishing tournament video footage. Okay. So, and but anyway, hey, you know we had a good. So in, in practice, I found several brush piles, in that you know I had some in 12 foot, some in 21 foot, and I found this long point. I came way out and dumped right off into a creek channel swing. You had brush kind of sitting on it. Man, I, I was actually, after practice was over, I thought I was I was in for a good tournament. I'm making, you know, man, I might go down here and bust like 17, 18 pounds. And, which I, I honestly never have high hopes when I go to that lake because, especially when they're offshore. Now, spawn, yes, but offshore, it's so hard to find that needle in a haystack. You know, those perfect brush piles. I idled for seven hours in practice on the last day of practice, Look, you know, and I found some of the, you know, prettiest stuff you've ever seen. Um, but I don't know if it's a good spot. I don't know if any a fish has ever been caught there before. I just, I marked the, the three brush piles that were in the right depth. And I thought, because most of the bait that I was finding was in that 12 to 21 foot, you know, it just kind of depended on what area of the you know creek you were in but they were really high in the water column or they were just kind of hanging around the brush pile so that's kind of how i set my game plan up you know i had a i had a magnum worm uh i had a bull worm from strike king from my strike uh from a shaky head which is a really cool worm by the way because it's it's made of this whatever kind of plastic it is i'm i'm not an engineer but i tested it out in my pool and you, when you throw it in there, it literally stands straight up. I mean, right on the end. You don't even have to move it. You just pop it once and it's just sticking right there. Uh, so a bull worm in uh, the red bug pattern. Uh, Strike King 6XD in se sexy, chartreuse sexy shad, which has got like a pearl, kind of a pearl belly to it. Uh, really good looking color. I went to tackle attic after practice because I, I caught a four pounder the first day of practice on that color uh, because the water was clear and that, that the way that color looked coming through the water I mean obviously the chartreuse blue back is gold at Rayburn but it just seemed to be a little bit too hot so I went to a natural color um, so I w went to tackle attic bought all they had and that was going to be my practice, a drop shot, a crankbait, a shaky head, magnum, uh, magworm, and, uh, and of course you got your uh, Carolina rig. You always need a Carolina rig on deck. Um, but I, I thought, hey man, we're going to smash them. Pull up to my first spot, which you saw in the video, which I don't know if, okay, let's back it up. You saw that guy cut me off in a video after takeoff. 
I have no idea where that came from. I mean, I was looking side to side like I always do. Uh, maybe he was coming from off, kind of off our stern at an angle, but I just happened to look over and there he was. And I don't, man, it, I mean, that guy was a douche. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. That was a douche move. Um, it, you don't cut somebody off like that. That's just not how you do it. If you're gonna pass somebody and you know you're coming at them from an angle that they probably can't see you, then you slow down and you go behind them. Um, I don't, man, I don't, I still don't know what that guy was thinking, but you saw in the video, if, if, if I hadn't slowed down, we would have hit rub rails. I mean, we would have, we would have hit in some way, I think, because I don't think he saw me. And, and you see in the video that when we go across his wake, like his rooster tail actually dropped water from his rooster tail landed on the lens of my GoPro. So, you know, you're too damn close when that happens. So just, I mean, guys, just slow it down a little bit. I mean, I know it's a tournament and we're jacked up and, you know, we had ACDC rolling and we're just like, yeah, you know, full blown tournament mode, but it's a tournament. When it's over, you want to go home to your wife and kids. We all want to go home safe. It's not like we're fishing for a hundred grand. And even if we were, it ain't worth getting hurt over. So just slow down, keep your head on a swivel and just watch out for other guys. And, and just, uh, man, I mean, just talking about it's kind of getting my blood pressure up again because I was, dude, I was pissed about that for at least the first hour of the tournament. Anyway, uh, first spot didn't pan out as much as I thought. We got a couple in the boat, three pounder right off the bat. And I'm thinking, yes, we are golden. And then it just dried up. I mean, fish would come up schooling and busting shad, lots of shad in the area, but I just could not make those fish fire. Uh, so we started running our brush piles and of course you know we drew a late boat number which is 121 I don't mind a late boat number when it's that late into the summer because I want all the time I can get to fish you know check in was 415 and most of the fish big fish I caught during practice you know I didn't get a bite or I did not catch those fish until you know after one o'clock like late in the afternoon when the sun was high uh, so I wasn't really stressed. I mean, I knew I knew that both those bites were going to come, but my brush piles just were just full of Kentuckys or one pound dinks. I mean, they just the kickers just did not they didn't show up for me during the tournament. But we managed to get it done on some on some schooling fish in that was you know kind of close to my primary area. Uh, but we you know we got our limits. I went back to my primary area and I was throwing on a brush pile with a drop shot. Just kind of like had about an hour left. I'm thinking, you know, they could be there, so I'm going to go back and finish the day. Pitching a drop shot in this brush pile, I was catching Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. Wouldn't help. Um, and, you know, I, I, I had 11 pounds, uh, right around 11 pounds. And I'm just thinking, you know, one one call puts me. I was shooting for that 13 pound, 13 pound mark. Anyway, I threw in there. And I thought it was another Kentucky man. I'm reeling it back. I can't really feel the fish. Not really, it's, you know, it's not pulling hard or nothing. And these are the kind of Kentuckys that just steal your worms. You know, like little one pound or half pound black bass and Kentuckys. That was all I was catching out of this brush pile. But I just felt like there was some decent fish holding around it. If I could just get one to bite. And lo and behold, fish bites. I'm halfway reeling it back to the boat because I thought it was a Kentucky. It was like a two, two and a half pound largemouth. Just jumped straight out of the water right at the boat like a blue marlin and throws my drop shot. And how that happened, I don't know. Because normally when you hit a brush, a, a drop shot fish, you get them right in the top of the mouth and you own them. But, you know, my luck, <laughs> like I told you, my luck, I'm going to lose a key fish at some point, and I did. Uh, I don't know on Rayburn if it's if I'm just having a bad day or if the lake is fishing that bad. I know it's late September so or late August, and, uh, I mean, you kind of have your hunch. So when we weighed in, and I weighed in 11 pounds, 6 ounces, and Brad's like, yeah, man, you're, you're right on the cut for to fish tomorrow. 
And I'm like, what? Okay, 11 pounds, six ounces gets me fish day too. I, I doubt it. Uh, so we waited around for a little bit and a dude weighed in 11 pounds, eight ounces and I was out of the cut. And so two ounces, which goes back to that one fish, two ounces or three ounces to beat him, three ounces would have had me fishing day two and I would have cashed the check and got paid. But hey man, <laughs> one day I'll get over that hump, I promise. So, uh, but again, so I finished 32nd for the tournament and uh, I'm sorry, 31st in the tournament because the top 30 went and man, we packed up and went to the house because I was tired. I wanted some air conditioning because that tent was awesome. But it was just being outside the tent. Like you didn't have anywhere to get to to get cool like you would if you're staying in a house or a hotel or something. But anyway, we made uh, fifth overall in the points and and we're going to Grand Lake in October. So that's that. I uh, appreciate y'all sticking with me. And again, I am sorry for the footage. I promise I will do better. And I will next time you see me, we'll be on uh, we'll be headed to Oklahoma. So y'all take care and we'll see you next time.